This is a surah that, alhamdulillah, we just completed last week in this masjid. We completed its tafsir. A lot of learning, like every surah of the Quran. We cannot cover it in this khutbah, so I am going to select a few verses and lessons. This is the story of Musa, alayhi salam. As you know, Musa, alayhi salam, was taken care of by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the moment he was born. When he commanded his mother, alayhi salam, to put him in a box and throw him in the river so that it, he can be picked up by others. So the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets initiated and implemented. It is two camps. The mother is crying, not knowing what to do. And the people of Fir'aun are at loss because the baby refused to accept feeding. And it is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he had promised we shall return him to you. And we shall make him amongst the messengers. So just do what you commanded, don't worry. So he refused to eat. And then he went on to find who he can accept, who he can accept to be fed. And they were brought to that same platform in the marketplace where he's sister takes the deed and says, I know where you should take him. And that I know is to his mother. Salam. This is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Musa grew up and he went through stages of his life. There is this episode in which now he is being called to go and deliver the message. And that message is to whom? To the most, most powerful man on earth. The one who has declared enmity beyond all bounds. He said, I do not know any other God to you or for you but me. That's what he declared. So Musa alayhi salam, when he was commanded to go, اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى. First thing he asked, Alayhi salam, Allah Rabbi shrahli sadri, wa yassirli amri, wa hlul uqdatan min lisani, yafqahu qawli. Oh my Lord, enlarge my chest. It's not physical, it is the wisdom, the ability to deliver. It's not a simple task. And make 
make my matter easy, O oh my Lord. And please, O oh my Lord, undo the knot that is in my tongue. He had a proficiency, he had a speech, handicap, alayhi salam. And then, beyond that, he asked, I need assistance, O oh Allah. وَجْعَلْ لِي وَزِيرًا مِنْ أَهْلِي هَارُونَ الْأَخِي Oh my Lord, please provide me someone who can help me in this major mission that you are asking me to accomplish. And he designated his brother Harun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted that. قَالَ قَدْ أُوْتِيْتَ سُؤَلَكَ يَا رُوسَى your request has been granted, O oh, Musa. Now go, you too, to Fir'aun. قَالَ رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا نَخَافُ أَنْ يَخْرُطَ عَلَيْنَا أَوْ أَنْ يَطْغَى Even with that, Musa is still afraid. He said, Oh my Lord, we fear that he shall hasten in punishment. And he shall exceed beyond bound because they know who he is. As soon as they open the topic to him, Allah will know what would his reaction be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and listen to this, قَالَ لَا تَخَافَا إِنَّنِي مَعَكُمَا أَسْفَرِ وَأَرَى Do not be afraid. I am with you. I listen and I see. That particular moment in which you shall be facing him. I am with you. So just go do what you are commanded to do. I'm relaying these brothers and sisters so that we understand how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped Musa from the time he was born. And by the way, this is for all these prophets and messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never let them down. And then we know the big event when he was called on, we blamed him of being a magician and all of that. The long story. And he faced and he could not win in argument. Now Fir'aun is moving to the next gear. He went back, he collected his forces. And he came to this public platform that Musa invited him to. It is a public platform everybody sees. It's the encounter. And we know the results of that encounter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after that big win, where his stick consumed and finished off with all the magic that was displayed that day. Allah Azza wa Jal commented him now, O oh Musa, Fir'aun is going to do something else. You better flee the land. And so Musa fled the land and he was leading his people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال, وَلَقَدْ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَى أن أسر بعبادي فاضرب لهم طريقا في البحر يبسا لا تخاف دركا ولا تخشى. This is سبحان الله. Allah Azza wa Jal is asking his messenger to lead the believers of his people to migrate and take them away from the land of Fir'aun. And Fir'aun has assembled his forces. He's running after them and they are fleeing forward. And when they reach the sea, Allah commanded him to hit the sea. And the sea opened like a mountain. Allah says, like a monstrous mountain. That's how the water split. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, the beauty of the Quran is when you contemplate think about the wording that is being used in the revelation. This is in the sea. 
the water has opened. It's a slippery path. We all know when you go to the ocean how those rocks are slippery. You have to pay attention where you put your foot. What did Allah Azza wa Jal do? When the water was opened, the Mufassirun said that he sent a drying wind, a hot wind, to dry the bottom of the floor. That is what is referred here. So you put, make a path for them that is dry. That's where that dryness is, so they can walk without any uh, concern about slipping and falling and so forth. And so brothers and sisters, they came across to the other side of the water and all is done and finished. Finally, Allah commanded the water to flow the body of Fir'aun that has drowned as he followed them. Lafadahu al-Bahar Water threw him out of the bank. His people could not believe that Fir'aun would ever die. This is how he was. That's how people were brought up to believe and think. And so he is here. Juthatun Hamida Lifeless body on the sand. At that point, Musa alayhi salam thought it's over, the struggle is finished. Allah Azza wa Jal has made his deen to be the up to have the upper hand. Now Musa wanted to leave his Lord. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he marched to meet him in that specific place and he was ready to fast and fall as described in the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal he left Musa left his people behind. And this is the mistake that I want to share with you. When we make decisions, we have to be careful how to make decisions. Allah is giving us the example of one of his messengers that he is teaching. What made you hasten to come to me and you left the people behind you? قال موسى عليه السلام قال هم أولئك على أثري وعجلت إليك ربي لترضى They are behind me oh my lord they are coming they are on my footsteps I just hasten out of eagerness to meet you oh my lord الله عز وجل told him this news قال فإن قد فتنا قومك من بعدك وأضلهم السامرين. When you left them, second, the third person, a foreigner, an outsider, a samiri, is not of them Israel. He came in, injected his ideas, created a false idol for them, and they followed him during what? During the absence of Musa. And he even claimed, by the way, this is the Lord that Musa went to look for. I found it. And he followed him. So look at this. The work of a prophet. Two prophets. That took a lifetime to achieve. Has been undone in no time. Why? Because of a hastened decision. Musa came back frustrated and angry. He left his brother Harun behind to take care of them. And what happened when he came back? What has, what prevented you from stopping them when you saw them being misled? What stopped you from not following my instructions? Are you dis disobeying my commands? So the fitna ignited now between who? These are the lessons of the Quran, brothers and sisters. It's a fitna not between common people, between two prophets and one of their messengers. Harun, to quieten things down, 
he invoked their mother. قال يا ابن أم لا تأخذ بلحيتي ولا برأسي. Oh my, oh the son of my mother. Don't grab me on my head and on my beard. What does it mean, brothers and sisters? It's a public display of fitna between two prophets. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us. We, the common people, are subject to the same and more. We have to be careful. We have to be observant. We should make sure that we do not engage in any of that. This is the lesson from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ تَجِدُهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا السلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه. After this story, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala addresses His Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. كذلك نقص عليك من أنباء ما قد سبق وقد آتيناك من لدنا ذكرى. And so do we relate to you. The news of those who were before you, and we have granted you from us a remembrance. That is the Quran. And then the verse later he says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa kadalika anzalna hu Qur'anan arabiya, wa sarrafna feehi min al wa'id ila addahum yattaqun, aw yuhdithu lahum dhikra. فتعالى الله الملك الحق ولا تعجل بالقرآن حتى يقضى إليك وحيه بقر رب زكني من قبل أن يقضى إليك وحيه بقر رب زكني علينا الله سبحانه وتعالى speaks of this Quran O Muhammad we have related you to you we have given you this wahi of the Qur'an and we have explained in it plenty of warnings so that they may fear and they may remember and then subhanAllah this word أَوْ يُحْدِثُ لَهُمْ ذِكْرَى This Qur'an is meant to invoke in us believers it's a trigger from within so that we stay on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the power of the Qur'an. Believers, no matter how far they go, left or right, if they are brought up properly, this invocation from within shall put them back, inshallah. This is what the power of the Qur'an, of Yuhdith. Al-Ihdath is to trigger. Al-Hadath is something new that did not exist before. It's a news, it's something that did not exist in you. That comes up and reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَعْجَبْ Just like he asked Musa, what made you hasten? He's asking his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَلَا تَعْجَبْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يُقْضَى إِلَيْكَ رَحِيمًا So this Qur'an, why it is being revealed to you, O Muhammad, don't hasten to try to memorize. إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ الْقُرْآنَ We take care of its assembling it its recitation, its memorization, that's on us. All Muhammad now just focus on receiving the revelation. Ali Salatu Salam was concerned about not missing missing portion of the revelation. So he was trying to memorize as the revelation is revealed. 
Nimr the revelation was extremely hard on him physically. The Sahaba related that. And so, Waqul Rabbi Zidni Ilma, my brothers, and said, Oh my Lord, Zidni, increase me in ilm, in knowledge. Ibn Fassilun said, كان عليه الصلاة والسلام لو لم يزل في زيادة من علم حتى توفى الله عز وجل. He kept learning, he kept increasing in his knowledge until Allah عز وجل took him away to him. He's reported to have said صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم انفعني بما علمتني. Oh Allah, make me benefit from that which you have already taught me. وَعَلِّمْنِي مَا يَنْفَعُنِي And teach me that which shall benefit me as I go forward in my life. وَزِدْنِي إِلَّا And increase me the knowledge. My brothers and sisters, the reason I say this on making tough decisions, spending time when you make those decisions, one of the biggest decisions we make in our life is with regard to our children. It's where we educate them, how to educate them, who should we entrust them with in their education. And so, as we see things changing around us, this safe space that we have is luxury, but we should Take care of it, and we should make use of it. <laughs> this is your school. That's what this project is all about. It's to benefit us and our children. Don't fear about getting poor because you will be asked to pay for your child's education. My brothers and sisters, we are faced with two things. When somebody asks us, Please give me your wealth. I will invest it for you, and you have to pay nothing. However, I don't guarantee anything. And there is the other option of, yes, you will be asked to pay as I invest for you. But I will do my best to guarantee you maximum outcome. That's what it boils down to. We provide you and we provide them. Just make the right decision. My brothers and sisters, this concept of education, Rasulullah My Lord has disciplined me and he has excelled in that discipline. This ta'deeb, this politeness, this courteous behavior, this training of the mind to be obedient of Allah, this high character, this cultured, well-mannered, refined behavior. This needs constant hammering and constant upbringing. And when the child grows like that, then inshallah, he or she will be able to navigate her path. أستغفر الله لي ولكم تستغفروه تجدوه غفورا رحيما إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم تستغفروه